In the previous lesson, I showed you how sigma notation works. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to write a sequence or series in sigma notation. So I'm gonna show you how to actually create all of these different parts down here and here and here, for example. I'm gonna show you how to make that. So let's begin. So here they give us a arithmetic series. It's, be, it's, it's arithmetic because we can see that they are adding two when going from each term to the next, okay? Now, in sigma, we have three main parts. We've got this part at the bottom. Now, we're gonna make this easy for ourselves. We're just gonna say k equals to one. You can use a different letter if you want, but you would never wanna use a different number at the bottom. Just use one if they ask you to use to write it in sigma. The next thing we need to know is this number at the top. Now, because we chose a one at the bottom, then what that means is that this number over here will be the same as the number of terms. That is only because we chose a one at the bottom. If we chose a two at the bottom, then this number wouldn't be the same as the number of terms, okay? So that's important. But because we chose one, then we just need to go work out the n, and we can then just write that over here, okay? And then this part is just gonna be the sequence formula. So let's start, it doesn't really matter where we start, but let's go start with the sequence formula. So we know that this is arithmetic, but now we're gonna use the sequence formula, not the series, the sequence. So we're gonna go an is equal to a1 plus d times n minus one. Now you're just gonna go fill in as much as you can. So term one is five, the difference is two, and then just write it like that. Then just go simplify. So five plus two n minus two, and then that becomes three plus two n. But now, you see how we used a k over here? So when you write the formula, just use a k as well. It's important that these two match. Now, the next thing, we just need to go work out how many terms we have. So what we can do is realize that this is the last term in the sequence. So we can just say 143 is the value and we can go work out what position that would be. So we can just do that. And then you could say 2n is equal to 140 because I took the three over and it became 143 take away, uh, three. And then you could divide by two and you'd end up with n equals to 70. And so you could just put a little 70 over there. And that is how you would write something in sigma notation. Now let's go practice some more examples. So here's the next one. Now, what you're gonna realize is, um, once again, we need to find three parts. Well, this part's easy, just say k equals to one. Then you need to find out this part here, which because we're using a one at the bottom, this would represent the number of terms. And then here, you're just gonna put the, um, the sequence formula. Okay, so let's go find that first. So this is a geometric. See how they're multiplying by two? They're not plussing, they're multiplying by two. So we're gonna use the geometric sequence formula, which is that one over there. And A1 is five, R is two, and then like that. Never multiply these two together because this N minus one is blocking you can't, you can't multiply those two together. Okay, so that's our sequence. You can just go put that over there. Oh, but remember, if this letter, I mean, sorry, the, if this is a K, then you wanna use a K over here. It's important that those two letters are the same. Now we need to go work out the number of terms. So we can just say that, oh, the last term is 20,480. And then you can just do this. Okay, now, divide both sides by five. You don't wanna multiply those two together, rather divide by five, and that'll give you 4,096. Then, you need to get these two numbers to be the same, because it's an exponential equation. You can use logs if you want, if you're comfortable with that. So if you try work out this, you could say maybe two to the eight. Maybe it's two to the eight, so let's see. Nope, that's way too small, that's only 256. Let's say two to the 11, what does that give us? 2048. Okay, so it'll be the next one. Two to the 12 would give us 4096. So we can change this to two to the 12. And so what happens now is that we can cancel the twos, and so you just end up with that over there. 
and then you can solve for n and you'd get 13. So we have 13 terms and that's all that you need to do.